Thunder Punch will be forcing the opponent's final Protect Shield, but we need to pivot or we're going to get farmed down. Switch Timer just simply will not pop up and Tapu Fini leaves incredibly loaded. We're going to call the Surf. If we survive this, the opponent is going to be forced to look for that Water Gun farm down Crest. Rapidly running out of HP, but able to make the Grass Knot and somehow we're able to take that gain. Welcome back to the home of Shadow Pokemon. Recently, Cresselia has been released in its shadow form. So, of course, we're going to need to test it out. As I only had one rocket radar, I did intend to use this in the Great League. But unfortunately, RNG was not on my side. It maxed out a 1,501 CP. You couldn't make it up. So I thought, fuck it. I'm going to invest 170 rare candy and an elite TM and use it in the Open Ultra League. The regular variant of Cresselia has bulk for days, it's able to absorb so much damage, but the flip side of that is it hits somewhat like a wet noodle. It's going to be interesting to see how the shadow bonus affects Cresselia. It's now going to be doing 20% more damage, however, the flip side of that is it's going to be taking 20% more damage in return. When I was looking to build a team around Cresselia, I thought Typhlosion sounds like the perfect partner in Climb. Of course, Cresselia really going to struggle into them steel types, Something that Typhlosion will be feasting on, and on its legacy move of Grass Knot, it's going to cover its weakness to both ground and water. The two most common threats that Cresselia really will struggle into are Alolan Sandslash and Reggie Steel. So rounding the team off, we're going to have Fralligator, because it's not only decent into both of them threats, it's probably the best generalist in the format. Without any further ado, let's get into the battle! And in game one, we lead Shadow Cresselia into Tapu Fini. A very nice matchup, especially with Legacy Grass Knot. The opponent say switches into Drapion, and I send out Typhlosion. Typhlosion, insanely glassy. Not going to appreciate a Shadow Crunch. However, we do survive one. I'm then going to throw two Incinerates, throw the Blast Burn on the Charge Attack priority, looking to secure the knockout. The opponent wants to flip switch. I'm quite low, but I know I'm not going to get Poison Stung farm down, so I am going to match shield and look to force the final or take back switch. And Eva's fine for me. Let's see what the opponent wants to do. The opponent desperate to flip that alignment, and we do force both protect shields. Shadow Crunch is going to hurt, so we're going to send out Gator. We're going to tank the first, look to farm up, throw the Hydro Cannon on the CMP side. Interestingly enough, the opponent goes for harder in Sludge Bomb, which is going to allow me to throw five Shadow Claws. We farm up, throw the Hydro Cannon on the charge attack priority, and it's time to pivot. Let's go, Cresselia. Let's see what you've got. The opponent running a very interesting double dark poison strategy. Something I am very familiar with. You can already see that that Shadow Moon Blast does so much damage. The opponent throws exactly as soon as they get their crunch. It's 7 to the first, 6 to the second. Cresselia, with a non-existent attack stat, will lose CMP, so over farm. Throw on the fifth poison jab just before the next crunch. Moonblast secures the knockout back out. Comes Tapu Fini and it's time to land that legacy Grass Knot. Grass Knot lands for big damage. However, in fairness, the regular variant still two shots. So I'm not really sure this is a matchup. The shadow bonus does me too many favours in. The opponent throws the nature's madness. We withstand the damage, pivot into Gator, reach the Hydro Cannon and we're going to be off to our 1-0 start. GG's and thanks for playing. In the next battle, oh boy. My god, do I feel like I talked this thing into existence. Or perhaps I'm a victim of the algorithm when I say switch into Gator, which is our soft counter, and out comes Tentacruel. Nice to bait this thing out. So Typhlosion doesn't have to face it, and this is by no means the worst matchup. The opponent throws after only 8 poison jabs. This can only be an acid spray or a skull. The opponent throws the skull. We get some good fortune, not getting debuffed, and that is going to mean we're either going to force ourselves, shield advantage, or take back switch. Come on, trainer, just let it go. I promise you don't need switch. Your Sand Slash is so safe against my back line. The opponent gives up switch, then send out Sand Slash without waiting at the clock, and that is something they're going to live to regret. Look at the incinerate damage. I instantly put up the easiest protect shield on my GBL career, and we're going to have a 2v1 scenario. They send out their own Cresselia, and they concede the match. In the next battle, the tough leads continue. Alolan Mark. Cresselia does outpace... Get into the Moon Blast before the Dark Pulse, but the opponent throws on CMP, so that can only be an Acid Spray. I'm not entirely sure why you go straight for an Acid Spray and not even look to bait the Dark Pulse. We land the Moon Blast, we then see the Pivot into Gator, and what the hell is this? Razor Leaf Venusaur, are you serious? I fall send the Ice Beam, does the opponent respect the damage? They do not! They near get one shot, Gator able to take back Switch. I'm really hoping I can reach the depart in Hydro Cannon, but unfortunately Mark gets the Poison Jab farm down. However, as I can now have the option to realign, we're going to send out Typhlosion, and again they go for the spray. Typhlosion, not going to appreciate these poison jabs, with a double debuff defence, but we're able to get the full incinerate farm down. 
We leave with energy, but hardly any HP. Out comes Giratina. Giratina going to operate as a pretty good wall to this energy, but Blast Burn and Shadow Typhlosion do not give a crap about Typhins. Now we've landed a resisted Blast Burn, they should pretty much be in Moonblast range. We've got a bit of energy left on Typhlosion, and I think I always need to save one Protect Shield, as we're always going to sneak and incinerate when we come back in. We go straight Moonblast, not looking to find any lose con. We force the opponent's first Protect Shield. The opponent allows me to reach the next Moonblast. It looks like they're committing to the Shadow Claw farm down. The question will be, can a resisted Blast Burn knock out this bulky beast? We sneak the incinerate, step one. Step two, Resisted Blast Burn needs to knock out. The question is, is it enough damage from this range? Come on Typhlosion, in Typhlosion, I believe. Get that Giratina off my screen. There was never any doubt and we take that game. In the next battle, we see Giratina this time in the lead. Why can't I just see a bloody Swampert? However, of course, this isn't the worst matchup due to us having Moonblast coverage. You can see I do pause a turn, ensuring the Moonblast does land on Cresselia and not something that resists Fairy in the back. We force ourselves early shield advantage. Looking at my health, I'm fairly confident I can survive one further Shadow Sneak and reach the next Moonblast. We tank the Shadow Sneak, look to reach the Moonblast, but the opponent does make that catch I was worried about, catching onto Trevenant. However, high Trevenant meet Typhlosion. The opponent is going to need damage registration error to get off the Shadow Ball they commit. They don't get it. The opponent sends back out Giratina looking to operate as the damage sponge, but the problem with that is that nothing really soaks damage particularly well from Shadow Typhlosion. The opponent throws a really poor fast move timing. So using a two turn move like Shadow Claw, you ideally want to throw two quick moves into a five turn move or seven. You can throw at four, which is suboptimal, but still a lot better than instant throwing. Choose the opponent throwing a really poor timing. I'm able to reach the departing Thunder Punch for some very valuable chip damage. That might even put him into one Shadow Claw range from Gator. Let's see, I send out Gator. I guess we'll never know as the game denies me. I'll be honest, I've been pretty optimistic about the game recently. However, today, the game ran like absolute shit. I went 1-9 to start the day, and I was getting so tilted. I went for an early lunch before coming back to battle. Which of the battles you can see on display here? I was reluctant to shield a move from Giratina. They hit like a wet noodle, but it looks like we're going to do a classic Jamie Finn. A 1-4-1-5 and reverse two shield flex and take a heartbreaking loss. GG's to that opponent. Of course, there's no point in shielding this up, as we just get counter farm down, that would just waste my time, my opponent's time, and your time if you're still watching. In the next battle, we see another A slash in the lead. We say switch into Gator, baiting out Polyrath. This is a negative matchup, but Gator seems to do a pretty good job of baiting out a lot of things that Typhlosion doesn't want to see. I'd love to be able to force a shield here, but if the opponent goes for the Scold rather than the Icy Wind, which they do, they're going to be able to counter farm me down before I reach the back-to-back -back Hydros. Pretty heartbreaking to be honest, the opponent is going to counter farm me all the way down. We're just going to send out Cresselia and use it as the damage sponge. Polyrath is going to reach two charge wounds, so after they deplete all their energy, we're going to switch out into Typhlosion and get a one incinerate run and start. So after the opponent throws this move, it's time to pivot and pray Typhlosion is good against whatever's in the back as well as Sand Slash. We do get that one incinerate run and start. The opponent of course can't return with Sand Slash and out comes Skeledurge. A resisted Blast Burn does do more than a Thunder Punch, but the opponent's kind of forced to shield, so this is one of the rare times you will see me bait. However, the second time, we are full sending. Does the opponent respect the damage? They do not, and just like that, a Wing Con has been found. I'm more than happy just to double shield here, resisted, incinerate, farm down, and leave with almost the back-to-back -back charge moves. The opponent's going to be unable to reach the third move required to knock us out. We leave healthy enough to tank three Shadow Claws, so I throw one further incinerate. Unfortunately, I haven't got the double blast burn. I'm hoping the opponent looks to call the bait. They don't do that. They invest that Protect Shield. So we go for the wham, bam, combo play. We will win CMP, so I just need to get this in the Thunder Punch range. The opponent allows me to reach one further charge move, and that is going to seal their fate. I guess the opponent at this stage is looking to double up one move to take out Cresselia and one move they hopefully think will take out Typhlosion. However, trainer, unfortunately for you, we've got the Thunder Punch banked and we are going to be able to pick up the dub and that is two for two on beating Sand Slash lead. GG's and thanks for playing. After my horrendous one and nine start to the day, it feels good to finally be able to pick up some dubs, even against some really unfavorable leads. In the next battle, we see Tapu Koko in the lead. We're going to need two moves to knock them out. So we throw seven Psycho Cuts, not really looking to bait a Moonblast, just looking to throw out good timing. The opponent gives up a Protect Shield, then go for the Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt does hit slightly harder than Nature's Madness. 
We are just going to reach one further move. We throw the Moonblast, looking to do maximum damage, and you can see that's why a Grass Knotted, as one Moonblast isn't enough to knock out. The opponent throws the Nature's Madness, securing the knockout. We send out Typhlosion, the opponent pivots into Gator. They got a one turn switch. We are going to be able to outpace to the Thunder Punch. The opponent doesn't shield, so we pivot into Gator. Hopefully, we can tank a charge move and Shadow Claw farm down before the next Hydro can. That's going to be tight. Can we get it? Oh, no. I was really tempted to put it all on Typhlosion, but as I've got energy, I think the idea of two versus one and the one to one shield is the safer play. We invest that Protect Shield, out comes Skeledurge. So like I said in the previous battle, you throw two Shadow Claws, which is four turns, into an Incinerate. I've got no idea why the opponent didn't shield that. They then pause, try and make the catch. They're unable to get it. We Shadow Claw farm down. Tapu Coco, Shadow Claw farm down. Skeledurge and take that game. In the next battle, we see Deja Vu. So using a two turn move into a four turn move, you just want to throw an odd number. So I throw the Grass Knot after seven Psycho Cuts. The opponent tanks the damage, return fire with the Thunderbolt, and then send out Skeledurge. And it is Shadow Gator Tom. I take the initiative, go straight for the Hydro Cannon, looking to put some shield pressure on the opponent. It looks like the opponent's at least going to fight for Switch. So logically here, I think they're going to bait. Let's see. We do call the bait. We don't shield bait in this household. Gator, grinning away, fires off two further Shadow Claws, maintaining discipline timing. We not only take back Switch, but we also obtain early shield advantage. The opponent sends back out Tapu Koko Gator, able to reach the Hydro Cannon. Shadow for Alligator still in the spotlight. The opponent's got their own Gator in the back. To be honest, if you don't know what's in the back, it's probably a 50-50 call from Polyrap or Gator, as they are here, there, and everywhere. The opponent attempts to throw on CMP. We don't throw, we sneak the extra, which is going to mean we're going to land one of these Thunder Punches, as the opponent only has one Protect Shield. They tank the first, we pivot into Grisselia, we reach the Grass Knot. There literally is no point in the opponent's shield in this. They do shield, we're just going to allow them to do whatever they like. They don't commit to the Shadow Claw farm down, but regardless, this game is over. Typhlosion has the move banks, so even if the game doesn't allow me to win CMP, we could shield, get off the move, and take that game. In the next battle, we see Gliscor in the lead. This battle had me tripping out. I've played this matchup out so many times as a Shadow Gliscor into a regular variant of Cresselia, but here the roles are reversed. The opponent throws the Night Slash, fishing for the boost, which they don't get. Gliscor often comes with water type, so I pause a turn, ensuring the Moonblast isn't caught on a water type. If they did switch in a water type, I would Grass Knot and dip. Despite the opponent being able to hit me for super effective, Cresselia's bulk, holding up strong. Again, I do pause, ensuring the Moonblast lands onto Gliscor. The opponent able to withstand the damage, but likewise, we should be able to survive one further Night Slash, despite my garbage IVs. Cresselia able to Psycho Cut farm down and leave minimal farm for their own Gator. Of course, we're just going to enter the mirror. I'm really hoping this isn't double water, because if it is, we're in trouble. My climbing team of the Ultra League is Gliscor, Shadow Gator and Shadow Sweet Coon. If it's that team, I think I'm cooked. The opponent farms up a boatload of energy before firing off the crunch. We're just going to return fire with the Hydro Cannon. And we're going to put it all on Typhlosion and pray it's not double water. We have managed to get the opposing gate in a range where we can resist an incinerate farm down. Although if they're smart, they'll instantly pivot and they do. Out comes Cresselia and this is very, very playable. Again, we're not looking to shield any baits. The opponent needs to show me the future site before we respect it. The opponent baits with the Moonblast. We then throw one incinerate and the Blast Burn for optimal fast move timing. Only giving away one free turn. Again, we throw one incinerate and the next blast burn. There is no need to bait. Baiting would be my lose con. We're still hanging on to two protect shields. At this point, we can just shield up whatever the opponent throws. They don't even have future sight. They're now throwing grass knots. It feels pretty bad to shield a grass knot, but it is what it is. We're just going to keep farming up. The opponent tries to make the catch. We incinerate farm down Gator and the opponent concedes the match. In the next battle, yikes. When I was team building, I evidently didn't think about Guzzlord. If you like to kill poor defenseless cats, I think this is an easy bait as Moonblast is double super effective. So I think the opponent is always shielding that if they look to stay in. However, we don't really bait, so we full send the Moonblast, which of course the opponent shields. They then send out Skeledurge, and that is best case scenario. Unlike the previous battle where I looked to get rid of Skeledurge or force a protect shield, as I've got shield advantage, I'm actually going to shield once. Over farm, before firing off the Hydro Cannon, which is going to allow me have the best opportunities for an ice beam of course as we've got Cresselia I doubt the shield an ice beam as this is only single super effective whereas a moonblast will be double super effective the over farm allows me to reach the ice beam 
We're even going to survive a dragon claw as well. As long as we tank this healthy enough. To survive one dragon tail, which we do, we're going to be able to reach the hydro cannon. So despite Guzzlord being a huge core breaker, we've managed to get rid of it. We pivot out into Typhlosion and out comes Ampharos. Again, the opponent does it for a particularly good timing. I've now got double Thunder Punch. So I'm just going to fire off double Thunder Punch. The thought process here is that one will be landing. A resisted Thunder Punch will not knock out. However, the opponent is going to have to throw a charge room at me. I'm just looking to put this Ampharos in a range where we can fast move beat it down. The opponent over farms as much as they physically can. We've still got two Pokemon alive. I could either Psycho Cut farm down or Shadow Claw farm down. We send out Gator, get the Simul KO and take that game. Oh man, another Guzzlord. Last battle I said this would be an easy bait. But I don't listen to my own advice. I full send the Moonblast and of course the opponent puts up that Protect Shield. We can tank any one move. Let's see if they're on Crunch or Brutal Swing. They throw the Crunch which does land some decent damage. We are going to be able to reach the second Moonblast. If the opponent shields twice, we're going to have to pivot or we're just getting farmed down. We send out Gator and we are certainly not in a great spot. I've got two shields. I don't want to shield the first move. The opponent throws the Dragon Claw, which does do a lot of damage. I'm forced to shield the next one. Guzzlord are running through my team. The opponent then tries to make an Ice Beam catch onto the Silly Electric Fish. I absolutely hate Lantern. However, I'm going to give this person a pass as for Alligator and Poliwrath are on 99% of the team. So it's pretty cool anti-meta. Unfortunately for me, I think this is game, set and match. It's super hard to catch moves using a five turn move. The opponent is now doubled up. We are going to shield once. The correct timing, of course, is to throw two sparks. Only pause two turns, hoping they spam it after one, which they don't. Unfortunately, my catch attempt was more of a potato play. And at this point, I'm going to say, buddy, you've got me. And I'm going to concede the match. In the next battle, we see Giratina in lead. This one is on Dragon Breath. So only hitting the neutral rather than the super effective Shadow Claws. The opponent farms two of potential Shadow Sneak, which they throw. But Shadow Sneak is a pretty garbage move. The opponent say switches into Glissapod. We're going to go for some chip and dip action. As we don't want Typhlosion, along with that Giratina, if at all possible. Worst case scenario, this is an X-Scissor. However, the opponent's only got Aerial Ace. I'm going to farm up, throw the Hydro Cannon on the CMP tie, which is a huge mistake. I actually fought Gator, one CMP here, or at least the last time I saw one, we did win CMP. However, I checked on PV Poke after playing this battle. It's actually IV dependent, usually in Glissapod's favour, especially when I got a pretty PVP IV Gator. You saw at the start, mine was like a 1 11 13. As I played to the CMP tie, I did not win. I go for the undercharge. Getting some more farm and out comes Tapu Fini. Holy. On second thought, I really like the idea of Typhlosion against Giratina as I certainly don't fancy tanking these water guns. Gator again putting in so much work, able to land the back-to-back -back Hydro Cannons. The opponent tries their luck, catching the Grass Knot onto Giratina. I see it coming in, fire off the Moonblast and send out Typhlosion. The opponent throws on alignment. If two Incinerates knock out, we can farm down. Unfortunately, two do not. The opponent would reach the Dragon Claw before the third Incinerate registers. So I opt to throw the Thunder Punch. The opponent, of course, doesn't invest that Protect Shield. I fire off the Thunder Punch immediately. I'm really hoping my Switch Timer pops up. Thunder Punch, force the Protect Shield. The second Thunder Punch will be forcing the opponent's final Protect Shield. Come on, Switch Timer. I'm spamming Cresselia. Switch Timer doesn't pop up. And this Tapu Fini leaves with so much energy. I'm actually going to call the Surf here. If the opponent surfs, they'll be forced to water gun farm down. Can we survive the water guns and reach the grass knot? Who was worried against all odds? Cresselia withstands the damage, reach the grass knot, and somehow we take that game. In the next battle, we see Ampharos in the lead. Of course, Ampharos will be running Brutal Swing, which will hit us for super effective, but I can't really pivot, and I don't really want Gator along with this in the end game. We managed to force ourselves early shield advantage. This is going to be a good test of Cresselia's bulk. As the opponent isn't running a Shadow Ampharos, we're able to survive. It looks like two Brutal Swings. We're able to survive the next Brutal Swing, reach the Moonblast. Moonblast should put this in a range where we can incinerate farm down, only tank one move. Although what do I know, the opponent two shields through Cresselia. I'm hoping with the Electric type in the lead, Gate is going to be good against the back line. I send out Typhlosion. The opponent throws the Brutal Swing, then send out Clefable running Charm. Clefable, you sir have a death wish. We fire off the blast burn. We then pivot into Gator, looking to get the farm down, which we get. 
If Ampros does return, we can just throw one Shadow Claw and the Hydro Cannon, the Volt Switch will not be registering. We not only knock out Ampros, but also get a further eight energy. It's Giratina in the back, and this is game over. I don't know why the opponent doesn't top left, but if they want that work, Gator certainly is going to give it to them. We shield up the Dragon Claw, throw the Ice Beam on the CMB type. Unfortunately, we're not an Ice type, so Ice Beam isn't enough to one shot. I could shield, I could let it go. I decide to shield, we're going to bank the Hydro Cannon, look to snipe with the Incinerate, and take that game. GG's, and thanks for playing. In the next battle, we see the mirror lead. If both of you are regular, this matchup is horrendously boring. Although, let's not kid ourselves. I don't think my shadow bonus is going to make this any more entertaining. So I guess go make a coffee, go make a cup of tea, have a beer. Obviously, if you're over 18, do whatever you want to do and come back in about 25 years when hopefully one of us has knocked the other one out. I'm just kidding. It's not the worst matchup. I think Azumarill versus Azumarill or Bastion versus Bastion are the great leagues the worst. You can see... As we're a shadow, it looks like you only need three moves to knock out, which isn't quite 25 years, just about two minutes of my life that I'm never going to get back. My horrendous IVs that got to 1,501 CP in the Great League means we actually win CMP. Unfortunately, our Moonblast isn't enough to knock out. The opponent is able to Psychic up Farm Down, but that just gives Typhlosion a one Incinerate run in start. The opponent sends out Shiny Gator, we then farm up, look to throw the Thunder Punch. The opponent makes a very nice catch, or at least at first I thought they did, but they send out Tapu Bulu. Oh, baby. Poor old Tapu Bulu is getting sacrificed to the Poke Gods. We are glassy. We do resist everyone. We tank the Nature's Madness. The opponent unable to Bullet Seed farm us down. We lead doubled up on Thunder Punches. We win CMP. Typhlosion has exactly the same stat distribution as Charizard, so pretty attack weighted. I am actually going to burn a shield here just to force the opponent's final protect shield. After this, my switch timer should be up. When I send out Gator, the opponent should recognise the game's over and concede the match. We pivot into the mirror. The opponent does gracefully concede the match and we're going to move on to the next one. Who did I piss off today with all these leads? Reggie Steele, a big fat no thank you from me and a say switch into Shadow Gator. Switch takes a turn, and I've thrown seven Shadow Claws, so this can only be a Focus Blast, but regardless, Shadow Gate are not the bulkiest, so I'm going to respect the damage. The opponent then enters the mirror. I get a lot of people ask me, how do I count Lock-Ons? I'm not. I'm counting my own quick moves, so Lock-On is a one-turn move. They get five energy per Lock-On, so every time I throw a singular Shadow Claw, they're getting ten energy. So it's going to be eight Shadow Claws to each Zap Cannon. You can use that theory for all types of quick moves. So if you're using Snarl or a free turn move, they're getting 15 energy per Snarl. If you're using Confusion, they're getting 20 energy and Incinerate is 25 per quick move. That's today's counting lesson. So returning to the commentary, we're going to send out Cresselia, use it as the damage sponge. You can see despite this being Shadow on Shadow Crime, we tank these moves reasonably well. Now the opponent's energy dry, we're going to send out Typhlosion looking to get that run in start. Typhlosion gets a one Incinerate running start. The opponent can't send out Registeel, they send out Pidgeot. I should have thrown three incinerates here, but I was fairly confident this blast burn would knock out. Unfortunately, they do survive, which means they are going to reach a charge move. I'm just going to shield anything. This is likely a Feather Dance bait, but do I care? No, I don't. To my surprise, the opponent full sends the Brave Bird back out. Comes Reggie Steel, but it's going to be straight in and straight out blast burn. Massive overkill, and we take that game. In the next battle, we see Tapu Fien in the lead. I'm always mindful the opponent might try and make the catch, and they do. They send out Galarian Weezing. I'm going to farm up a boatload of energy before pivoting out into Typhlosion. This is a really good matchup for us, especially when the opponent throws up poor timing. They're going to have to settle for non-stab Brutal Swings. It looks like we can tank two. So rather than going for the knockout, we're going to go for the Thunder Punch, get one further incinerate and look to fire off some Thunder Punches at the likely return in Tapu Fini. This will also minimise the amount of farm the opponent will get. I actually think I'm only going to reach one move. I fire off the Blast Burn, despite Blast Burn being a ridiculously busted move. When it's resisted and Thunder Punch is super effective, Thunder Punch actually does more damage. That is a misplay on my part. However, if Blast Burn hits for neutral and Thunder Punch hits for super effective, Blast Burn does it do objectively more damage. I send out Cresselia. We fire off back-to-back -back Grass Knots, and you're going to see not throwing the Thunder Punch could cost me this game as Tentacle survives very, very deep in the red. Would you even be watching some of my own battles in 2020 2024 if I wasn't playing like an absolute potato at times? I think a lot of that comes with just how infrequently I play the game. 
But while we're seeing me throw this match up, you can see another misplay there. I thought I'm not going to shield the Nature's Madness as it does lower my defense and the moves after that will do more damage. But by not shielding that Nature's Madness, we're essentially now shielding Surfs. So while we see the remainder of this battle play out, I'm going to give you my thoughts on Cresselia. I think Cresselia is fairly decent, but you can see through these battles, I didn't get aligned against a single fighter, a single Swamper, so we didn't really see the targets that we were looking for. But I did manage to have some alright neutral play. I wouldn't rush to build one, but it's worth having for the roster. So if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button. If you're new, consider subscribing. If you'd like your battle shoutcast on my channel, my battle submission form is down below. And as always, a huge thank you to everyone for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.